This is the new Ford Mustang convertible. And if you think of the coupe version as being like tough guy Vin Diesel in the Fast and the Furious movies, this one is a bit more like Vin Diesel in the film, The Pacifier. It's gone all soft. So the car, it actually starts from around 35,000 pounds, but you can save money on that. If you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk, you can save an average of 3,600 pounds on a new car. And in terms of value, this Mustang is actually pretty good. So as standard, you get a rear parking camera, you get dual zone climate control, you get electrically operated leather seats, though they're only electric for the base and the lumbar support. The backrest, you have to do manually. And then there's also Ford's sync system. Right, it's not the best infotainment system on the market. And if you click it there, you can watch that in-depth review of it to see exactly why. Another thing about this car is the design. It looks great, it's sporty, the driving position is brilliant. It's got loads of character, the only problem is it's also got loads of cheap feeding materials. I mean, mm, it is a bit nasty in places, this car. Cubby spaces, they're all right for the convertible, so the glove box is so-so. There's some decent space under here. And the door bins, they're all right. You can fit a big bottle in them, though you have to do it lengthways, and if you break too hard, that might come flying out. Getting into the back, well, it's never that easy on a convertible, and it's definitely one of the more difficult cars of all the convertibles to get into the back because you really have to squeeze because the seat doesn't slide out the way normally. Okay, so I was hamming that up a bit, but with the seat in place, with the roof up, I don't really need to say much more. I think that image should be telling the story quite well. So yeah, adults won't want to go to the back of this. It will be fine for kids though. As for the boot, the capacity is actually pretty decent for this kind of car and it doesn't change whether you have the roof up or down, which is handy. The only problem is that the opening is quite narrow because the design of the lights just alters the shape of the opening, so larger items are harder to fit in there. You do get some extra storage under here. Oh yes, great, that's fabulous. But yeah, on the whole, could be a little bit better, I think. Now, if you click up there, you can see just how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot, what it's like with two adults in the back, and just how easy it is to fit a child seat in this Mustang convertible. So then, that's the car's design and practicality dealt with, but what does it feel like out on the road? Now, I really like driving the Ford Mustang Coupe. It's a fun car. Fortunately, this convertible isn't quite as good. You see, by chopping off the roof, they reduce the structural rigidity. So to make up for that, they've had to fit extra bracing. That adds weight, so it doesn't feel as agile. Also, they've made the suspension slightly softer, and as a result, it feels more like a cruiser than a cornering fiend. Yes, it has a limited slip differential, and it's rear wheel drive, and it will light up its rear tires if you give it some in the bends, but I don't know, it just feels softer, yet it still bounces over bumps in the road, and with the roof up, it feels a bit dark and dingy inside, and you get quite a bit of wind noise from that roof as well, and the visibility, well, yeah, out the back window, it's, well, it's abysmal. Obviously, being a convertible, it's best enjoyed with the roof down. One of the issues I have with this car is that it'll only lower the roof at very, very slow speeds, pretty much walking speed, so you're best just pulling over. You have to release this catch, which is a little bit old-fashioned, and then press a button and wait a while. That'll be good to go then. Let's put the windows up. I'll just do it myself, shall I, Ford? Don't you bother to do it for me, thank you. Right. With the roof down, I'm starting to enjoy this car a bit more, you know. So, yeah, I don't mind so much that it's a cruiser, but this car does have a problem, and that's the engine that I've got in it. You see, you can get the Mustang with a V8, five litre, sounds epic. It's got plenty of shove. This one's got a four cylinder. Yes, it's got a turbocharger on it. And it's got plenty of power, not to 60, it's under six seconds. But it, yeah, when you put your foot down, it just makes that noise. Not the rumble of a V8. And that's a shame because with the roof down, you, can, you, know, you want to be able to enjoy the engine and there's not much to enjoy about the sound of this engine. Still, it does give better economy than the V8. So Ford says around 29 miles per gallon. Trick computer says, I'm doing 26, which is really good. Or actually, in reality, it's not that good, is it? But it's way better than you get from the V8. And part of the reason is that I'm just not encouraged to thrash this car. I just want to cruise around in it. Another slight issue is the gearbox. So it's an automatic. Put your foot down, yes. It takes a wee while to respond. And I can change gears using the paddles, but once again, this car's sporty character is lost in the transformation from coupe to convertible. It's an all right car. It's just not as good as it could be.
there are some other disappointing things about the Mustang convertible which affect all models in the range. Here's five. Mustang is supposed to be dead easy to drift, but the EcoBoost engine combined with the soggy suspension of the soft top and the automatic gearbox makes not for a drift machine. If you don't want to see the horrible roof mechanism, Ford does give you these manual DIY covers, which they're a bit lame. This car is literally brand new, but parts of it are just all loose and flimsy. It's as though it's coming apart already. This 2.3 litre EcoBoost engine has 35 less horsepower than the same engine in the Ford Focus RS, and it's actually 100 horsepower less than you get with the V8 Mustang. Ford couldn't be bothered to redesign the centre console for right-hand drive cars, so your handbrake's over here and the cup holders are in the way here. Thankfully, there's still plenty to like about this Ford Mustang convertible, which helps make up for all this. You can adjust the angle of the headrest or use it to communicate with dolphins. You can revel in the heritage because this little plaque reminds you that the Mustang dates back to 1964. Various track apps let you do things like measure the car's performance and log your lap times. This is the first Mustang in history to get fully independent rear suspension. With Ford's programmable key, you can limit the car's top speed, which is handy if you lend it to your kid. Lucky buggers getting to borrow a Mustang. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and find out the best deal you can get on a Ford Mustang convertible at carwow.co.uk. So then, my verdict. This car, should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider it, but only with the V8 engine. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And if you click over there, you can watch our detailed practicality and entertainment for the Ford Mustang convertible. Now, if you spot the Easter egg in this video, it was the boost bars in the car's cubby spaces. Get it? Boost? EcoBoost? 2.3 EcoBoost?